dear brothers and sisters um it's a joy to be here with all of you and have an opportunity to uh share some thoughts on spirituality you know as we look at our lives uh we're living in an age where um, we all have uh, many many interactions and many activities that we are involved in today life has become um such that every one of us feels like we are very very busy and uh, every day uh, many people uh, make a to do list things that they want to achieve in that day and we feel as if we are measured by what we've achieved uh when we're at work uh, generally we need to uh, track uh, what uh, we did during a week or during a month and i report so our managers can know uh, what we did if we are uh, in the school system then the kids are given homework and based on how they respond to the homework is how they get graded if say you're in the profession like the medical profession doctors are maybe um, checked out as if to how many people did they see in a day or how many patients did they see and so when we look at our lives we find that we generally are um, kind of looking at ourselves as to what have we achieved and what have we done and so in this world we feel the more we can do in the time that we have the better of we are there's this feeling that if your to do list gets done in a day you feel very satisfied and if uh, you've left many things on the list then you feel oh i did not perform as i should so when we when we live in the physical world and most of our attention is in the physical world as a person Uh, we're always striving to do things get this thing done get this thing done get this thing done uh, because of our relationship so the mother a mother might have to take care of the children and make sure that the groceries in the home and make sure that all the appointments are done well and so every one of us whether we are in the workforce whether we're staying home taking care of the kids and whatever profession we might be in or whatever job we have we're always um, doing things and so when we think about spirituality we always think of what should we do to grow more spiritual but what is very interesting is that the principles that work in the physical world are not the principles which work in the spiritual arena so when when you want to be successful in the spiritual arena you just have to remember that you have to learn how to do nothing <laughs> we're so used to doing things that we say okay now i want to be spiritual i want to meditate let me close my eyes and see what am i going to do should i look at should i look at do i do this what am i supposed to do so we're so geared that by doing something we'll achieve something that for us it becomes difficult because we're always doing something and so to to understand that we have to do nothing to grow spiritually uh, becomes very difficult for us to be in that state but if if we don't learn how to do nothing we are not going to be successful in the spiritual arena now for those who are spiritually minded we learn the techniques to meditate techniques to sit in silence to the techniques of saying i'm doing nothing it means like you're sitting in silence so that the will of the lord can open up in us you know all scriptures are talking about the divine light and sound of god and this is why in a place of worship we find those symbols whether whether you light a lamp whether you ring a bell it's all symbols which tell us hey there's this divine light and sound of god that we can get connected to 
And Sant Kapal Singh Ji Maharaj would often say, he would say, what one person can do, so can another. That each and every one of us can connect with the spiritual power within. Now that power is flowing within us, whether we call it the Holy Word, or the Naam, or the Shabd, or the Divine Light and Sound of God. So it's like a faucet which is bringing all this energy out in us 24 hours a day. We need to connect with it. We need to partake of it. We need to be in a spirit where we can have it reach every pore of a being. And for that, we need to be receptive. And so, as we sit down to meditate, let us not think about that I want to experience this, you know, that principle of not my will, but thy will be done, is something we should think about. You know, in the East, um, we have the same principle. It says, Tera bhana mecha laga, it says, sweet is thy will, which is, hey God, whatever your will is, let me do that. Let me not put my two cents into it. And when you think about the reason why, we all, in this day and age, are quite educated people. So we think we know it all. We don't understand that we only know what we have learned in this lifetime. So we go to school, we go to college, we get a degree, a bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD. Then we specialize in that area and that's all we know. There's much more in the world that we don't know. Let's say you get a PhD in physics. So you might be a real expert in knowing the sciences and all that stuff. You might not be that aware of geography, let's say, or something else, or social studies or something else. But we as a human being feel, oh, I worked very hard, look at what I did. I got the highest degree that I can. I've been doing so well, so I know it all. So then we think that because we feel we know it all, we think we know what we want. Yeah. But little do we realize that what we know is, is limited because all we know is what we've experienced in this lifetime. And that also of what areas we went into. But God the Creator knows our past, knows our present, and also knows our future. Because God's knowledge is unlimited. God the Creator created everything. And so everything is under God's knowledge. And so when we live with the principle in which we have God be the doer, then all the right things are going to happen to us. Because when we make decisions based on our own knowledge, which is limited, we are bound to make mistakes. Sandarshan Singh Ji Maharaj, who wrote much about the spiritual power, wrote a very beautiful verse about this. He says, Nahi janta ke main kya tusse maangu. Nahi janta ke main kya tusse maangu, jo mere liye hai, bhala chata hon. He says, Oh God, I don't know what to ask of you. Please give me whatever you think is best for me, whatever is well for me, whatever is good for me. So that's the right way of living. And, and this we find in all our scriptures. This is what Sweet is Thy Will is all about. That, that we realize that God the Creator is aware of each and every aspect of our life. Many times in life what happens is, you know, we all go through ups and downs of life. We all have problems in life. You know, difficulties come in. And at that time, we start to question God. We say, why is this happening to me? I did not do anything wrong. Is God just looking at all these rich people or educated people or, you know, someone else? You know, grass is always greener on the other side. So we're always thinking that at that time, how can God put us in this state? Not realizing that even though it looks difficult at this time, and many times, I'm sure some of you would have realized too, many years later when you look back, that was the right thing to happen. So when we live under the principle that each and everything that is happening to us is for the highest good, 
then we will find that our life becomes very, very peaceful, very, very calm. And it is then that our life goes very, very smoothly. It's difficult to do because we all have our egos. We all have been trained actually in the physical world to excel. We all have been trained to do things. And so it's very difficult for us to sit to meditate and not do anything. Because even when we close our eyes, we're thinking about this plan and that plan and this thing and that thing and that thing. Because we're so, so trained to do this thing all day long. But when we sit, then we should only think about the spiritual arena. We should only think about God. We should only focus on God. And, and, and the saints and mystics say, I mean, they're talking about an empty cup. That the process of meditation is not one where you sit and say, I want to experience this, I want to experience this. That's called clutching. Then we're clutching. We're saying that, I want to experience this thing. So whenever you say, I want to experience this thing, that's, then you're forcing your mind to be able to have that experience. And, and that's not what true meditation is all about. True meditation is that we sit at the door and we wait. And whatever is right for us is what comes in our direction. That, that it comes automatically, it comes from God. It's not like we are the ones who are originating that. Because whatever we originate is only going to be materialistic. Whatever we originate will all be, be at the physical level. But when we sit with the willingness to be open, with the willingness to let the faucet of, of true divinity, of, of elixir, of, of um, joy and of bliss, which comes from God, we open ourselves to let that flow through. Then only we are going to be able to gain from it. Because whatever comes from God is for the highest good. And, and when we get to that state, it is then that we truly are getting to be spiritual. So, as we, as we try to gain on the spiritual path, the, the technique of meditation, which is to be still, which is to not move the body, so we're not doing anything physically, we don't want to think at that time. So mentally we're not doing anything. So that is what is meant by doing nothing. Okay. So we just sit very calmly, just like, you know, you totally relax, the whole body should be relaxed, your eyeball should be straight. And then you're just waiting and let the will of God uh, play out. Now, as soon as we close our eyes, Whatever we think before, we're not going to think, we're not going to think, we're not going to think, thoughts are going to come anyway. Because the mind is, is, it wants to do something. So the key then is to focus the mind on God. So, so to keep the mind, be focused on God, we do a general repetition of God's name. It should be done effortlessly. So when we sit to meditate, we're not clutching, we're not saying, I need, I need this, I need this. Then we need to sit with what we call an effortless effort. We're not putting any effort to meditate. We're not like gazing like this, or we're not like thinking, forcing anything within ourselves. It's an effortless effort. The effort is to focus the mind on God. Because we realize that if we don't do that, the mind is definitely going to send some thoughts to us. And that effortless effort is to repeat God's name mentally. So any name of God that we feel comfortable, we can repeat mentally. And as we do a mental repetition of God's name, what happens is the energy of the mind is then focused on God. And there's no other thoughts that will come to us. This comes with practice, doesn't happen the first day, extreme time and effort. But in that state, when the body is still, the body is not doing anything, our emotions are not doing anything, and the mind is just focused on God. It's in that state that we start to experience uh, the divine 
lay the revelations within. And and vistas after vistas of divine light and sound open up. And when they open up, and they put us in a state of tremendous joy, in a state of happiness, in a state of bliss, that lasts not only for that time that we are meditating, but that lasts for long periods afterwards also. The beauty of that is that when we are in that state, our interactions with others, which are going to be coming in our life anyway, we can't stop our interactions from other people, they then are much more easily handled because then we are not in a turmoil. We have the peace within that when things come in which are contrary to what we believe. You know, difficulties come in life because things happen which are contrary to what our beliefs are. If everything happens what we believe in or what we think should happen, then we are very happy. Then there's no conflict, there's no problems, everything's going on well. But as soon as something happens which is contrary to what we expect, we're distraught. But, but when we meditate it, the, the effect of that stays for long periods afterwards so that we can deal with other things more harmoniously. We can deal with the ups and downs of life much more easily. And as that happens, then we'll find that our life will get better and so will the life of everyone else that we meet. And so it, it just takes time, it just takes um, effort on our part to be in that state more and more. And, and it, is, it is when we are in that state that we find that we are growing spiritually, we are having more experiences of the Divine, we are finding uh, the closeness of God more and more in our lives and we find that uh, we are happier, we joyous. Uh, the ups and downs of life don't trouble us. Generally when there's any problem in life, it bothers us a lot because no one wants any problem in their life. Everyone wants life to go smoothly. So where do we find the source of happiness and joy? Not in the world outside. It's all found within ourselves because God is not like up in the sky. God is with each and every one of us. And so the key is to invert. The key is to go within. The key is to get to that state of silence. You know, when you um, when you read the scriptures of various faiths, um, and there are two sides to every faith. There's the exoteric side, which is the outer side of faith, which talks about how do we behave when we go to a place of worship, outside signs of how we practice our faith. Then there's the esoteric side of faith, which is the inner side of faith. And the inner side of the faith is similar. The outside side of faith is different. Like, do we wear our shoes when we go to a place of worship? Do we take it off? Should our head be covered? Should it not be covered? Do we light a lamp when we go there? Do we ring a bell when we go there? These are the outer signs. You know, they're different in every faith. But the inner side is all meditative. It's sitting in silence, experiencing God, it's going on the spiritual journey. And that's the experience that we all want to have. So, so when we are focused on that aspect, it is then that we are growing spiritually. It is then that we are experiencing God. And so various faiths have talked about uh, the spiritual journey. And, and they've, like, they've talked about many um, planes, let's say, or states. Uh, some people call it the states of consciousness, more being spiritually conscious. Other people call them the states of being more still, more still, more still, more still, so that um, uh, there are less distractions. So some people talk about five regions of existence, other people talk about eight regions of existence, some people talk about 22 states of silence to get to God. So it's like demarcations of us from the physical to the divine have been done differently by different phase, but they all talk about their journey towards God. And that journey comes in a meditative state, where they call it meditation, where they call it like praying with attention, we call it inversion, we call it sitting in silence, we call it bhajan simran. These are all names given in different faiths in different languages to a very similar practice. The practice is to take our attention away from the world outside, focus it within ourselves and connect with the divine power of light and sound of God, which is within each and every one of us 24 hours a day. And the more we can connect with it, the better off we are. So let us just meditate for a few minutes. Uh,
please sit as comfortably as you can. Now close your eyes very gently, just like you close them when you go to sleep. Your eyeballs should be straight, as if they focus 8 to 10 inches in front of you. And as you close your eyes, uh, those of you who have been initiated in the mysteries of the Brahman, please do your similar. And those of you who knew here, just repeat any name of God that you feel comfortable with. And this should be a mental repetition. If you do it out loud, your ears would hear them and you'll be distracted from outside. So just mentally repeat any name of God. With time, light will sprout forth. It could seem like it's like flashes of light, circles of light. It could be the lights could be of various color. It could be golden, it could be white, it could be red, blue, green, yellow, orange, any other color. Just keep your gaze right in the middle of the experience. So our, our job is to close the eyes, make sure the eyeballs are straight, and just gaze right in front, just like in the home we watch TV, right in front. And what is actually happening is that the light of God is within each and every one of you. As you concentrate, you experience the light. As you're distracted, you experience darkness. And with time and practice, your concentration gets better and better and better. And as your concentration gets better and better and better, then you experience light more and more and more. And so to you, it looks like the lights are stabilized. And then you go beyond the lights to a sky, to a sky full of stars, in a moon, in a sun, and many, many other vistas open up. So our job is to just keep our gaze in front, stay still, repeat God's name so that our mind's power is going into towards God and not to send thoughts to us. And then whatever experiences God thinks are right for us are the experiences that we'll have. Because God knows what is right for us. And so we just wait and let those experiences come to us. I, I pray to God Almighty, I pray to the three great spiritual masters of past century, Hazur Baba Savan Sindhi Maharaj, Param Sankupal Sindhi Maharaj, and Dhyal Prasand Darshan Sindhi Maharaj, to help each and every one of us connect with this divine power within and to experience the divine light in its effulgence. So we'll sit just for a few minutes, and I'll be getting you out of this meditative state at that time, and my best wishes are with each and every one of you.
please leave off uh, please leave off